When I think about dreaming big, uh, I think of about envisioning uh, something that is beyond natural, something that challenges you to move forward out of your natural ability. Well, I grew up in a, a broken home. My mom and dad were never married, and my family uh, were active gang members in the local community, and uh, uh, my mom's house was the local hangout for all the young gang members in the community, and I was a little kid back then. I used to watch the gang members hang out. I, they used to feed me, and um, I used to play around what they did. You know, the gang culture developed a bad attitude in me, and uh, I started to act like a gang member. I started to dress like a gang member, and at the age of 12 years old, I made the mistake of officially uh, joining uh, the gang, and I hit the streets, and I hit the streets hard. And during that time in the late 80s and the early 90s, the gang warfare in Los Angeles was uh, at its height. Gangster rap was uh, at its height and I got sucked into the gang warfare of greater Los Angeles. One day I uh, skipped school and me and my friend went to cruise around just to look for something to do and we ended up seeing a rival gang member uh, in a rival gang territory uh, and regretfully uh, we shot at them. When we shot at them, um, I didn't know if anybody uh, was killed. Um, we immediately had a, uh, a sense of panic. Uh, somebody started to chase us. They, somebody got in a car and they began to chase us for a little bit. Uh, so I didn't know if anybody got hit or killed um, at that moment uh, because my desire was to get out of the area. It was a sense of panic that over, overtook me. Uh, and eventually I made my way home. The morning of my rest, um, I was sleeping in my room and I heard a knock on my door and I thought it was my grandma waking me up to go to school. Um, but instead it was the sheriff's department. They banged down my door and they put their gun to my head and they told me, get down, get down. And uh, they handcuffed me. And at that time I was 16 years old and they began to escort me uh, through the living room. And I can still see like a part of my family sitting in the living room with my grandma who helped raise me and she was crying. And she screamed out to me, what did you do? What did you do? And the police officer uh, took me through the living room and he put me in the back of a police car. I was arrested for uh, one murder and one attempted murder, a gang related uh, shooting. And uh, I remember they drove me off to the police station and I began to look out into the streets at the people going to work or school. And uh, the detective, he turned around and he slapped me with his words. He said, you better take a good look at them streets, boy, because you'll never see them again. And um, I was slipped into utter darkness at that moment at the age of 16 years old. My dad had planted the seed of the gospel in me when I was little. So I, I knew of God. And when I was in a cell after I got sentenced to life in prison, um, there was a, an elderly man. He was coming down the tier, passing out Christian literature. And I, was, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was mad, I was frustrated, uh, but this old man barged into my darkness. And so I got up and I shared with this man. I said, mister, I just got sentenced to life in prison. What are you gonna do for me? What could you do for me? At that time, I was 17 years old. My life was over. And to my surprise, this man didn't budge. He did something so courageous. He reached through the bars and he grabbed my hands and he said a prayer over me in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe at that moment, the compassion of God exploded in my cell. And um, eventually, a couple days later, I cried out to the God that my dad taught me about. Well, sometime after that, God had begun to give me a big dream, a vision he placed on my heart. And he told me, he put in my heart, that if I were to serve him and not give up, Eventually, he would uh, set me free from my prison life sentence to impact the world with the gospel. And he gave me this vision, he gave me this dream, and I began to write it down. I put it in my back pocket. 
I began to pray over the dream. I began to prepare for the dream. And it almost felt like the dream was beckoning me forward through my darkness. It almost felt like the dream was moving me forward one step at a time because every time I felt like giving up or every time, you know, it was just too much to handle, God would remind me of the dream. And it gave me hope to like live another day. God has performed his word in my life. He's literally manifested that dream. 16 years after uh, I got sentenced to life in prison, God miraculously uh, set me free from a life sentence, uh, actually in 2008. And since that moment, uh, he has been taking me first uh, around my community to share the mighty works that he's done in my life. Now he's taken me across the nation uh, to share how he set me free and to minister fresh hope through what he's done in my life. And he is just continually to unfold this dream and then eventually, um, you know, God inspired us to start Chapel of Change with the mission to give fresh hope uh, to this world. And we launched uh, four and a half years ago. We're seeing diverse people from different types of backgrounds surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a multi-ethnic church. We're hugely diverse, young and old, different backgrounds. And that is a miracle when you see different groups of people uh, that only have really one thing in common, which is the Lordship of Jesus Christ, surrendering to God. And so since we opened Launch Chapel of Change, uh, we've seen over a thousand people surrender uh, their life to the Lord. We've seen drug addicts being restored. Uh, we've seen marriages uh, being restored. We've seen people getting fresh hope. Uh, but more importantly, our vision uh, is to launch a thousand churches. And so now God is not just uh, restoring people's lives, but he's restoring people's missions. And he's taking broken people and he's restoring them and anointing them and getting them ready to expand the kingdom of God through planting churches. My advice to somebody who's struggling with their past is to remember that number one, it's not your dream, it's God's dream. It's God's dream. You didn't have the bright idea. God gave you this dream. And when God gives you something, he'll give you the means and the power to bring it to pass. You're alive for this very purpose. The reason why you're still alive is to go after that dream. There's a reason why you're still breathing. It's because of the dream. Go after it with all your heart and soul. So that's why you're still here today.